we'll be focusing today about a very very important topic of congenital hypothyroidism which is the most common form of neonatal endocrine disorder congenital hypothyroidism has the most profound impact it is definitely the most treatable and preventable form of mental retardation of 22 year old lady who actually presented to us with severe developmental delay and pathological short stature if you can see so compromised in that perspective the height was only 112 cm and had all the features of uh, hypothyroidism which could have been picked up right at birth and maybe later on but unfortunately presented so late which really highlights the importance of what we are talking today how congenital hypothyroidism can have one of the most important impact and that can have a huge uh, factors in that perspective so you all can go and have a look at our website learning.brosociety.in explore different courses which are available up there have a look at our modules and we regularly have three grand rounds related to the pg grand round post graduate uh, lectures and the endocrine grand round and our books and mobile applications are also available there endo european reference network endorsed guideline now in this uh, what about neonatal screening most of the concepts have been very well described by sir but this is just a brush up or whatever has been updated in these guidelines so the most sensitive test for detection of primary ch is tsh if resources available do tsh and ft4 to look for central uh, congenital hypothyroidism now following that what what about preterms in preterms in preterms uh, we need to know it is different from term now what about the uh, application what about giving lt4 in uh, hypothyroxinemia of prematurity it is still controversial and uh, most of it say do not give it is not really required just repeat the tests now as sir mentions because of immature wool check of effects in newborn iodine disinfectants iodine disinfectant completely contraindicated due to this effect and finally as we discussed in twin pregnancy now what really happens due to the transfusion between the twins it may be falsely low the tsh may be falsely low so keep a low threshold for repeat testing or just do a second screen in the twins and importantly measure tsh in the non infected twin also later now what about down does the twin transfusion help navi why does it mask hypothyroidism the baby because the subject fp4 is reaching the other twin so normal baby is providing the thyroid allergy so that is why you will have transfusion Uh, now, what about Down syndrome? Down syndrome have a fourteen to twenty-one times higher incidence of congenital hypothyroidism, and the most common, what you've already seen, is the subclinical hypothyroidism, which is seen. So, it is advised that you do an additional FT4 and TSH at around one month or three to four weeks age. And what if there's a family history? So, if there's a family history of central congenital hypothyroidism, it is advised you do FT4, but you do the TSH along with it, even after normal TSH on screening. now coming to the diagnostic and criteria for treatment what is the criteria for starting treatment according to these guidelines a low tsh and T- low ft4 and tsh above the age specific interval you treat tsh more than 40 at screening at a center where tft is urgent tft is not available you start treatment don't wait for getting tft later or not now tsh more than 20 at confirmatory testing which usually occurs around the second week that time more than 20 you start treatment now what they are saying is tsh between 6 to 20 after 21 days now the gray area between the second 14 to 21 days has not been covered in this guidelines but i believe it is between 6 to 20 you repeat the test again so you follow tsh from 6 to 20 after 21 days with a normal ft4 you have two options either you start and follow up or you retest after one or two weeks now the benefit from ft4 if you go just by studies it is unclear but most of the studies a majority of the studies go towards treating rather than not treating in this space and do they recommend about specific diagnostic test like scan uh not in this sir. we we treat and then scan if it, it's not been 5 to 7 days you do do or otherwise so you do after the european guidelines were more in favor of doing a scan and then they were talking about uh, in between 6 to 20 okay okay so generally speaking if it's more than 6 to 20 mm-hmm. which is persistent Better to start, start treatment. That's what. Uh, with here they have mentioned now. There's a there's a severity based on FT4 levels. Uh, less than five picomol per liter is considered severe. Five to ten is moderate, and ten to fifteen is considered mild. Now, what about neonatal screening? 
initiate LT4 before conducting uh, the imaging study. Now, of course, we know these are bases that uh, there are two types of study that is technetium 99 and iodine 123. Technetium is widely available. It is less expensive, but faster. But iodine 123 has more contrast. The percolate test can be done in iodine 123, but not in technetium. And it has lesser radiation per se uh, as compared to technetium 99. Now, apparent atheriosis, we must keep in mind, again, it is just being reiterated that if a test is being done after five to seven days of LT4 initiation, maternal TSH receptor blocking antibodies, TSH, NIS mutation, and previous iodine exposure, think, be aware of these. How important is it, suppose somebody has got a very high level of TSH, how important is it to do a scan? How, how much does it help? So it is just a diagnostic, uh, otherwise we can start treatment and do it later also. Because the role mm. of scan, although we have already told that scan is very important, should be done, but how it doesn't really change, change the environment in most cases. Yes. So where it is most important is actually In these cases. 6 to 20. Mm. If your DSH is 6 to 20, then, then scan will be your major. Yes. If you are thinking of a maternal trap antibody, then it will become more important. Mm -hmm. So routine, see, if you have a clear-cut case of very high level, no then scan, many people are not even doing imaging mm -hmm. and scan. They say it doesn't make a big difference. But suppose if you think of a transient cause, mm -hmm. like maternal antibodies, mm -hmm. like you think of uh, drugs which can mm -hmm. cause that, antithyroid drugs, or if you think of iodine, iodine exposure. there it may have a role. But otherwise, in a routine situation, not scan may not be that important. Mm. So people are going the other way around the computer. Yes. Because scan alone is not, not really important. We might need to do more. Yes. Uh, as sir mentioned, in these cases, you do an ultrasound.